Hello lovely people. You may have seen in my last video that I got this lovely words to inspire journal from the works and I've been using it to kind of symbolize things that have been going on for me um, this month because I've got a really big birthday. So I'm kind of reflecting on the past and thinking about the future. And I thought I'd show you a few more pages of it and then also do a little um, a journal with me because I've just got some lovely new stuff from Crafter's Companion. Uh, more about that later. So I've done a few pages here since the last video. This one was just thinking about enjoying the little things and I used this gorgeous Liquitex acrylic ink. Um, this is the rich copper colour and I basically just splattered it all over the page once I'd stuck a few images down. And this stuff um, is beautiful. It comes in these dropper bottles. So it's really easy just to flick it all over the page, which is what I did there. So that was great fun. And then I was thinking about the fact that I live near the sea and I love the sea, but I hardly ever get there. So I just did a double spread here to remind myself about the importance of spending time down there because it's so good for the soul. And I used some of the pieces from the Helts Couple Ditch um, beach collection and I did a whole video on that last year so you can look back on my channel if you want to have a look at that um, but I, I took these out of a Daphne's diary and and cut this out of one of her articles and just sort of thinking about how lovely it is to be at the beach and then I made a few lists and then this is one of the pages that comes in the journal and this is just reminding myself of um, how much I like to be on my bike and how I need to make that a priority. So um, I then came, so I've got a few purple pages left to do some purpley things on. And then I came to these blue pages and did a double spread. So for my birthday, my wonderful work colleagues gave me 50 yellow roses and I've got them all over the house and I'm just loving them so much. So I just did a page to celebrate that. And once they're over, this will just remind me of what a blessing that is and how how lovely it is to have those. So I'm going to do some journaling here today. And one of the things that I really need to do is tidy up um, my bedroom and have a big sort out. And I started that yesterday and I found this quote um, which actually I took off a paper bag of all things, admittedly a nice paper bag, but one that was very crumpled. And so I was recycling it, but I thought I would just keep this. So have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. And that's a quote from William Morris. And I just felt that that was something that I probably needed to think about at the moment. So I'm going to make a background for that quote on this page here and I'm going to try using this stencil and I've got some Pabeo, um heavy body acrylic and it's gonna probably get a bit messy but I'm just gonna try scraping it around a bit um, not sure how well that's gonna take with the stencil but just a bit of dobbing it on and not too worried if this isn't very precise but I'm just going to get a bit of the leaf shape in there coming along there and I'm just going for a quite um, a varied background here that has got a suggestion of foliage but is probably not going to be very precise because of the way I'm putting the paint on and uh, in fact, I may pick up the stencil and decide I don't like it at all and then um, just do something completely different <laughs> over the top. And that's one of the beauties of acrylic is that actually, um, if you don't like what you've done, you can layer over it and no harm done, really. Whereas with watercolour, it's kind of a bit more tricky because of the nature of the paint. It's much more see through. And so it's harder to do that. Now, I've got so much paint going on there that the stencil's sticking down and I'm not having to hold it quite so much. This is um, the from the Dyna range from Pebeo and it's got a bit of twinkle to it. So I'm just going to layer some of this over the top because I really like the look of it. And that's coming up nicely. Just pop a bit more of that around the place. 
And as I say, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. I'm really just playing with some of my supplies. And one of the things I'm trying to do is to stop hoarding things so much and actually really use them and just enjoy playing. And I'm, I'm really going to try and do that a bit more this year because I'm awfully good at um, getting everything for the workshops and, you know, for other people to use. And I really love doing that. But I'm actually going to try and play a bit more myself, I think, because I think that would be good for me alongside everything else so just going to put a bit more of the dark down so I'm wanting a few darker accents here and I'll be fascinated to see what this looks like when I peel it all back as I say I have no idea there may or may not be any leaf shapes showing just because of the the nature of the paint and whether or not it's bleeding and whether I'm putting it on well or not I have no idea but I'm really enjoying this um I like the way the different colours are merging together and uh, I like the way that the paint's kind of moving around on top of the stencil and the colours are um, just, well I hope it'll be a sort of variegated kind of highlighty effect with the dark through to the very light. We'll see. We'll see. Right, the moment of truth is coming very soon. Now there's still quite a lot of paper showing through the leaf shapes so I'm just going to spread the paint the other way as well to try and fill those gaps in a bit but not too fast if there's a bit of a gap. I'll make it a bit more interesting and I'm not going for a precise look here. I'm really interested in um, having something that's a bit um, kind of abstracty. Right, here we go. Let's have a look at that. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, that's come out great. Okay, I really like that. <laughs> that's superb. Okay, I'm going to maybe do a little bit more up the top here. Just, uh, just a little bit more. And, of course, this is going to take a while to dry. But... That's fine. I'm just going to slap the layers up and not worry too much about the paint being wet. Um, I'm terribly impatient when I do stuff like this. And I don't like sitting around waiting for things to dry. One of these days I'll get one of those guns you can use to dry stuff in a hurry. But, you know, just kind of go with it and see how it turns out. Okay. This is not stuck down so well, so I'm anticipating a bit more of a bleed through on this set. But as I say, it's quite an abstract thing I'm going for. So, sorry, my hand's probably right in the way of you watching there. Okay, so that's really fun. <laughs> that's really, really fun and slightly crazy. Um, but definitely, um, definitely enjoying that. Now, my temptation is just to go fiddling with it. But I know if I do that, I'll completely ruin any effect. So I am going to just pop the lid back on my paint. And uh, hopefully you can see where that's going. Now, if I were to really leave this completely alone, it would um, it would probably dry with a slightly 3D effect. And it is quite possible that I'm going to mess that up by adding some of this wax. But I just say so this is this is this is wax from Imagination Crafts. But it's water-based and consequently you can use it like paint. Um, it's got this amazing creamy texture. Somebody described it as being like butter. And what I think I want to do is just come in and put... So I'm just using my finger here and put some bits of gold. This is called white gold, this one. I don't know if you can see that. Now obviously I'm messing up a bit because I'm getting it mixed up with green. And I'm doing my usual thing of not using anything sensible like brushes, but just enjoying the whole touchy-feely business going on here because it does have a gorgeous consistency to it. And you can use this in all sorts of different ways. It's really good on things that are um, 3D. So, for instance, if you had um, something that you'd put through an embossing folder, it's really good with that. Um, but I'm just using it 
kind of in a very organic way with my finger there and I'm actually going to just pop that there because there's some on the lid and move it around a bit. Now what I don't want is the green paint going back in with the gold so I'm going to clean this really carefully but these little pot lids are brilliant because they actually mean that the um, the waxes don't dry out so that's um, that's actually starlight rather than alchemy wax and it's called white gold but I've also got some alchemy wax here and this is the green which is called peridot now I'm not 100% sure what the difference is between um, the starlights and the alchemy wax and no doubt somebody out there knows and if you want to put it in the comments feel free um, but they both have this lovely pearly sheen and what I'm going to do with that again is just dot it around a bit to kind of get an effect of depth going on in amongst my foliage and uh, that's looking great just, I'm not putting on vast amounts of it. I'm actually going to try using the card, I think, for a little bit, just to kind of give it some, some depth here. So I'm definitely kind of messing up my original design in a way that I really like, just kind of um, making a little bit imprecise. And when you think about looking through a load of foliage, um, often, your first impression is not individual leaves, it's just a kind of mass of kind of lovely greens and things. So that's all going well. And I'll pop that back on there. Now, what I want to do is to put my little um, quote down, my William Morris quote, and then I want to have some gold going on. Now, I've got um, in my, alongside my waxes, I've got this lovely shaken gilt um, liquid spray. And I've, I think you're supposed to shake it a lot because it's called shaken gilt. I've never used it before. It's new. I just got it today. So what I'm thinking I will do is just spray it all over this page and see what happens. Um, I've also got some colours of the waxes and I quite fancy trying to stencil some flowers using a sponge but I don't know where that's going to work. Um, I'm not going to do it in this video because I, I would need everything to dry before doing that but I'll see how it goes. It, maybe we don't actually need that. So there's that quote which I so need to take to heart because I'm such a hoarder and it really causes problems for myself. So have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. The trouble is I find a lot of things beautiful and I just love a lot of my stuff. <laughs> and so it's difficult to get rid of it, but you can have too much and having too much is worse than not having enough, I think. Um, right, here we go. I've not done this before. I've no idea what's going to happen. Let's see. I'm just going to check that's in, in shot there. Yeah. Right. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. Spray. Oh, wow. Does that look guilty? I wonder if I've not shaken that up enough. That's not looking amazingly gilt to me. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's try it again. Oh, gosh, yeah. Whoa. It's very fine. Very fine and very wet, actually. Right, I'm going to try adding to that. I'm not crazy about that. I don't know whether it's going to dry more goldy. It might do. Some of you may have experience of that, but look at this. This is the Liquitex ink. This is the um, Iridescent Bright Gold. And you can actually control this quite nicely about where you're flicking. So I'm just popping that over the top. That to me would be beautiful rather than useful. But then you see, if you're a journaler, you can justify usefulness in a lot of things. That's useful for me because it's making my journal look nice. You can see the way I'm going here. Dreadful. I can, I can justify anything, really. And that guilt's actually gone all over these other pages, which may in the end look nice. Right, so there we go. That's looking lovely. That's, that's really coming how I wanted it. Just this sense of foliage 
and then the shiny gold. Can you see how shiny that Liquitex is? I don't know if you can, but it's really glowing. Um, it's amazing stuff. So, just wondering whether I might, on the facing page, try some stenciling with some of the pink alchemy wax, just to see how that looks. And I think I'm going to use this one. This is from Crafter's Companion. It's one of the Sarah Davis signature range. And I quite fancy these over here. And then what I'll do is I'll write some stuff there. And really what I need to come up with, I think, is a plan of what order to clear things up in. I've done the whole Marie Kondo thing before. And I think there's a lot going for that method of tidying. Um, I, I did my whole um, upstairs by that method a couple of years ago, but I'm afraid it needs doing again. I'm just not very good at keeping up with it all. Anyway, I think I'm going to write myself a plan. And so I'm just making some space for some notes. But in the meantime, I'm going to try this wax. And again, just using my finger. And I think this wax works really well because it's not paint. It's got a much thicker texture just kind of burnishing it's interesting and it's not going to go right to the edges of the stencil and I think that will make an interesting effect. So this is going to look quite imprecise. Now I think because this is water based it will wash off fine off my stencil. Now I'm probably leaving acrylic paint all over my dining table here which is not very clever. As I say, if my children were doing this, I would not be happy. But uh, I'm breaking my own rules, so hopefully I'll get it all cleaned up before they come home. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Right, that's that's coming along really interestingly there. Just going to get that little stem in. It's amazing stuff. I just can't quite describe to you the feeling of it. I think you have to experience it. It's kind of buttery, only much nicer than that somehow. Um, so just going there now, I could, if I wanted to, go in with another colour over the top and just uh, get a kind of 3D effect. I might try that. So what I've got here is the Diamond Starlights and this is an amazing colour. It's, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if you can see that. I wouldn't have called that diamond myself. It's it's really an amazing colour. Um, yeah, I just don't know what you'd call that, almost sort of anthracite -y. Anyway, I'm going to just scrape that around the bottom of these leaves just to give it a bit of 3D coming out the ground. There we go. So, that, so I'm kind of mixing it in the stencil with the green and just smearing it up the leaves there. And these, this is starting to feel really waxy now. It's absolutely gorgeous stuff. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what the level of bleed through is like. But uh, I think it's probably pretty good because it's got that consistency that's, um, you know, kind of sticky. Now I've got some tulip pink here and I'm just going to try it on these flowers. And again, I'm taking it off the lid. Right, let's try that. Oh, wow. That's a really gorgeous pink. I don't know how that's showing up on the camera, but that's a particularly nice colour. It's it's kind of darky. It's not, it's not um, garish in any way. It's got a lovely sort of natural heathery colour to it. They call it tulip pink. I would call that ling. Um, because it's just that colour of the pink heather that you get on the hills around here. Um, there we go. Really spreading that around there. Right, that's looking lovely. Now, just to add some 3D to this, I'm going to put in some of the purple, which is called lavender, I think. 
French lavender and see how that affects the way the flowers look in the same way that I put the uh, diamond colour on the, on the green. And I've got a feeling I saw someone on YouTube kind of um, buffing this up I don't, to make it more shiny. I don't know if that's going to work. It's the sort of thing I could try once it's all dry. But anyway, that's I'm just adding a bit to the bottom. And then some of the pink hasn't gone through the stencil all that well. So I'm just putting some of the lavender on top to finish off the shape. The temptation is to use too much of it, which I'm trying not to do. But it's really interesting the way it kind of layers. I suppose that's the acrylic aspect of it. It's not like watercolour. It, it, it's got so much body to it that it really layers up nicely. Okay, this is going to be interesting. The moment of truth with this stencil. What's going to happen? Oh, wow. That's really interesting because it has definitely got a lift to it. It's definitely a 3D product. So when that dries, there's going to be a real sense of it jumping off the page. That's really lovely. OK, now I'm going to write over that. But in order to bring some continuity with the other side of the page, I think I'm going to splat the gold over here too. Partly just because it's like any excuse. Let's try the gold spray again. And see, sorry, my chair's creaking. See how that looks. It's interesting, this gold spray, because that, I don't know if you can see that. Let me try and lift it up. It's, um, it's very subtle, but I think, I maybe didn't shake it well enough. But I think once it's dry, that is going to look quite glittery. And then just to really... Put the finishing touches on. I'm going to do a bit more splatting. Now, this stuff isn't easy to write over with things like biros or felt tips, but with a gel pen, you can at a push write over this. And certainly with a sharpie, you could. But that would bleed through horribly. And sometimes what I like to do when there's a, a kind of pattern emerging on the page, for instance, here with all these different dots, is actually instead of writing along the lines is just to weave your writing kind of round um, and I find that works really well and it, it looks lovely but also the very act of kind of weaving the writing in and out it kind of unlocks a bit of your brain and, and somehow enables you to go a bit deeper with what you're writing and I know I in, in a workshop recently was showing people the, um, the what they call serendipity circles or I call them kind of circles of consciousness because you can go down the layers of consciousness as you're writing and as you you just uh, kind of do a stream of consciousness round the circle with your writing literally in a spiral really amazing stuff comes out sometimes so uh, do have a go at that um, but I think I'll be writing round these dots rather than over them I'm really happy with that. That's come out really well. And that I find inspiring. It just makes me want to um, write the list and get on with the job. Uh, really motivating there. Now, of course, the other thing you could do with this alchemy wax, because it's so thick and lovely, is had I let that dry, I could then have come in with the stencil over here. Um, and that would have come up beautifully as well. But I actually like the fact, I think, that this is just a page in its own right and then the flowers are simply an accent on where I'm going to do most of my writing. So big shout out to this stuff. It's absolutely gorgeous. Starlight's Wax and Alchemy Wax by Imagination Crafts. You get it from Crafters Companion in the UK and the Liquitex inks. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.